Okay, guys, today we are going to be talking about homeschooling um, and specifically about unschooling. But I want to say before we even start this video that I don't believe in good and bad parents. I don't believe like a good parent sends them to public school or a good parent homeschools them. I believe that kids need parents who are parenting with intention and who are present and doing like are thinking about it and doing their best. Um, and so that could look like a lot of different things. And so I don't want anybody to feel um, like I am declaring in this video how all people should either educate their children or parent their children. Um, I just wanna show you how we do it and maybe you can gather some things from that. But I think what kids need at the end of the day is just a parent who is intentional in helping them grow to be the best version of themselves. And um, that can look like a lot of things. So with that, let's actually talk about unschooling. Yeah. Okay. Welcome back, you guys. Today is going to be a little bit different. Um, we do these, you know, every once in a while on the channel here, but... Do what? A sit down... Oh, a sit down talk. Is talk. that what we're doing? Yes. Okay. Um, it, sometimes it just makes sense. It's the best way to answer, you know, when I'm getting a question over and over and over again, or when we are. Um, it's just the best way to do it. And I know it's pertinent for many of you right now um, that we talk about homeschooling and unschooling because it is the time of year where you're sending your kids back to school or wondering if maybe you don't need to send them back to school and or maybe you've already decided not to send them back to school but you're feeling a little nervous about it and i think there's also one other group and that's people who have been homeschooling for a while but are actually looking for more information about unschooling which is kind of a silly name but it it is the, the name that's used to describe the type of homeschooling that we do. And um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that today. We're going to kind of go through our journey and, you know, how, when we started, why we started and kind of how that evolved. And then we will end with, I asked on Instagram, on our Instagram account, which is just NORP underscore and underscore South, North and South. Um, I asked for more questions from you guys and I will, if we haven't already answered them, I'll look through the list and kind of maybe you know, finish off with some of those questions. So we do have nine kids and we have homeschooled all of them, um, at least for a portion of the time. And so what that means though, is that we hope it's quiet and that we have no- You'll probably hear kids in the background. Yes, so. because we work from home, it's a weekday, that's gonna happen. First of all, if you're new here, this is Mike and I'm Hi. Megan. And we have nine kids and we have been homeschooling since Elijah was in second grade? Yeah, 2009-ish, 2010? Yeah, so he's... Around then, when we started? So he, so 10 years. Yeah, just over 10 years. Yeah. Um, I wanted to homeschool him from the beginning. That was a new idea. I wasn't homeschooled and you weren't either. No, we both went to public school. None of us had that background. And at the time we were living in a really good school district in Texas that everybody raved about and particularly like a really good elementary school. And I wanted to homeschool though for different reasons. And I, but my family encouraged me not to because they said that's something you do when the school system's failing you or you're living in a bad area. Right, that was a last resort sort yeah. of option. Yeah, and so I did not trust my own desires and I sent him to school. We were young. Mm -hmm, we were young. He was our first. And um, sent him to kindergarten. Didn't love his experience there, but um, then first grade was better, but we pulled him out after first grade and, and, and started homeschooling. Mm -hmm. At the time, how did you feel about it when we started in our homeschooling journey? Um, I actually wasn't a fan at the time. You were like, obviously fan enough that uh, I mean, I didn't, it's not like I, degree, it's not like yeah. I, I refused it or something like that, but I was questioning whether... Um, I, I guess I wondered if we could actually pull it off, like they would get a good education. I wasn't, 
I didn't know if you had the bandwidth to do that with, mm, you know, yeah, being that was a, a big deal because by that time, um, we did have Andrew as well. He was mm -hmm. pretty young. And so it seemed like a lot to bite off in my opinion at the time. So I was, I was apprehensive. And, and then also my family was not supportive of that move. So that didn't help either. So there was a, there was a few things that was making me hesitate. Yeah, and I think both of us had to kind of go through a time period where we rewrote what childhood would look like because our entire right. childhood and teen years were revolved around the school year. <laughs> and so like, you know, you- And all those experiences yeah, connected so you'd to you'd start When we started homeschooling, you're like, wait, no senior prom. And like, wait. No book fair. No or... book fair, no, no school lunch and yeah. no recess. And like all of those things that we kind of had to work through and write and, and then I had to validate for myself, like, okay, they won't have that experience, but they can have a different and equally valid experience right. in life. And so that was, that took years and, <laughs> yeah, it, that took it, a while. and it took years for both of us to be comfortable with what we were doing and to and trust also ourselves. Confident, yeah, in what we were doing. And so anytime I was having a rough time, I was feeling overwhelmed. Your go-to I know. Well. Yeah, I was always ready to, to throw out the homeschooling and say, well, this is just one thing that adds stress that we don't need, so let's send them back to school and let's let's remove this from... Yeah, and I think, because you were like, going to work at the time. Yeah, I was. Home. I was leaving. I wasn't there. And so I didn't really, I don't, didn't have that connection. Yeah, and so also I think you were like, I can help you solve this problem. This is a big stress. Let's just get rid of it. Right. And part of why I think we struggled in the beginning was that cultural thing. But also I think what what a lot of people who decide to homeschool do is they have their memory of public school. Mm -hmm. And then they just try to do that at home. Which is what we did yep. in the beginning. And because you don't know, and really a lot of times you don't know any other way. And we were using a program that was actually designed to do that called K-12. It's available throughout the United States and I think maybe even outside of the United States. Um, and often it's it's even free and mm -hmm. it comes through the public school system and it is just essentially a public school curriculum at home. Right. And you're, you're registered still like with mm -hmm. the state or whatever. You and... log into a website and you prove that you're doing stuff and um, you get books and I mean like you get everything, mm -hmm. right? You get like all those little like counting cubes and stuff. Oh yeah, you're right. I remember um, that. Yeah, you get tons of stuff. And um so that kind of helped I think both of us even though it wasn't wasn't what we ended up doing long term. It did kind of bridge us and bring us into the homeschooling world, but it was really difficult because it was a ton of stuff to do and, and to keep track of. To keep track of and um it was not enjoyable work. It was a lot of There was a lot of the kids busy didn't, work. Or... Yeah. Elijah, and I think by that point, Elijah and Andrew. Andrew was yes. By the involved. time when we'd been doing it for a few years, and I was struggling, and they hated it, so it was like constant battle. And it was at that time that I went into a homeschool store, mm -hmm. and um, and she said, "Yeah, most people start with that, but they don't keep doing it because you can't do public school at home. It it just doesn't work at home. It doesn't equate quite as well. No, it doesn't work at home. And so it was that time when I really started to." research even more into how, different ways that people learn different curriculums and kind of opened my mind up to that um that is probably one of the number one questions we get about homeschooling is like um what what books should i read or where do i start and that's a hard question to answer um i just think the, the first thing is just start um I think go to your public library. There's going to be a lot of books there on education and homeschooling and pull out the books that are interesting to you mm -hmm. and that speak to you and don't feel like you have to read through all of them, but flip through and find those things. Um, because I really have read dozens of books on homeschooling and some I've kept and some I've moved on from. And I think the reason why I don't want to box you in and say, this is how you homeschool or this is how you, what books you should read is because there are some people who have a totally different personality type than us and a totally right. different lifestyle than us and they homeschool completely differently than us and it works. But if we were to lift up exactly what they did and come over and drop it in our home, it would fall apart. Um, and so I did that for many years. So we did lots of different styles of homeschooling um, and always had heard of unschooling. Mm -hmm. 
but I always thought, I'm well, not doing that. I hadn't, I, that was a, when you brought it up, it was a new concept for me. Maybe you thought about it prior to, but that was, yeah, it was, at the beginning for me, it was pretty um, radical idea. Yeah, and especially what, five or six years ago when we went to, like, we declared ourselves as unschoolers. Um, I, I think in the homeschooling communities I was in, uh, unschooling was seen as like, um, how to ruin your kids. Maybe <laughs> I'm not an unschooler. That's like the worst, right? right. That's for lazy moms or something. <laughs> but, uh, we kind of went through this phase and, um, when Elijah was going into the seventh grade, he was in seventh grade. The, we had at this point, we had tried a lot of things. And I had read a book about unschooling. It was really intriguing to me, but I had read a lot of other books on lots of different types of um, home education. And we were just about to bring home two of our daughters from China and we were gonna be gone for three weeks. Mm -hmm. And family and friends were a little overwhelmed about having our homeschooled four boys for three weeks with nowhere for them to go. Because well, there's uh, Peter and Asher weren't even in school that Yeah, time, right? I know, but yeah. I think they were overwhelmed because most parents send their kids away and they think, I barely make it through the summer and through Saturdays and holidays. I can't even imagine how I'd have my kids at home. And that's a question we'll get a lot and we'll address. But, um, and so they, we needed them to do us a favor and that favor was pretty heavy for them if they had to have homeschooled kids at their house because they thought they would have to like do worksheets with them and all of this stuff. And so they asked if we could put them in school during that time. For three weeks. For three weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's terrible. But it kind of evolved into a yes. Mm -hmm. And then they went to school. This was in February. Right. And um, brought the, we brought the girls home. And they stayed in school through the rest of that year into June. And they actually went, they went back the, the next year. And that worked for our family. It was really helpful for me bringing the girls home. That was a huge, huge life transition. Mm -hmm. And it really helped to have um, school and those sorts of things. Yeah, that kind of taking care of our system there. That yeah. But the reason I'm mentioning it is because before, I would say for the year and a half before that, we had really like, we had just gotten, it had gotten so messy and so overwhelming that we were probably having like, two good days a month where I felt like we were doing homeschooling well. Yeah, it was it was rough. Yeah, and the rest of the time we lived on a like a little farm. The rest of the time the kids were playing and reading and just messing around. And so when we put them in, I was it was a it was affirming to see and it was interesting to see that even though we weren't like like cuz I met homeschoolers who were like hitting the books every day for hours. Um, we weren't doing that and yet they did really, really well when they mm -hmm. went back to school. Elijah immediately had to take some tests and he was like at the top of his class in math and in science and all of, and all of them. Right. And so I was like, huh. And I just read this book about unschooling and we will now talk about what it is, but it, it did say like, maybe there is something to that. And so we pulled them out and said, we're going to give unschooling a chance. We'll do. So this was after that first wait when was that that was, was that after before? no it was after they did that like year and a half okay. in the public school system yeah. we weren't happy with it and we said okay we're pulling them out and we're going to try unschooling it with intention and um because that would take off a lot of stress and right we're doing guilt this on purpose. and shame and those sorts of things <laughs> um like, so i didn't her, always feel like i was failing <laughs> um and so we brought them home and said we're going to give it one year. I think first we said six months, but we said really we probably should give it a full year of trying this with intention. And if they, if we just don't see them growing and learning and then we will go back, we'll do something else, but we, we need to give it a go. Yeah. By this time, how were you feeling about homeschooling? Do you remember? Um, I was more on board. Yeah, you were on board. I was, uh, because I'd seen like, okay, how public school was for the kids and how that was, you know, the negative sides of it. And so I was on board for testing that out. And I think another key was you started actually reading some of these books with me. That's true. Yeah, I, I, I started to look into it because before it had all been Megan. Mm -hmm. and me trying to communicate right, why Right, always important. trying to convince me or, or, or help me understand why that was. So definitely I started to get on board when you 
kind of learned about it or when I learned about it. Now, I might be catching you off guard here because I know you don't remember don't everything catch me always. Off guard. But do you remember what book was actually the most influential for you in, in believing in homeschooling? Um, it was the um, Dumbing Us Down book. Yeah, Dumbing Us Down. That was a big, that was, a, that was probably uh, definitely a pitiful moment for me because it really identified how the public school system fails in a lot of ways. Um, so, yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah, I think if I were to tell you one book to start with, um, I think that's a really great one. It's by John Gatto. Gottman? No, it's Gatto. G oh, Gottman is, yeah. sorry. Hang that's on. another book. Say that again. It's by John Gatto, and he was like a teacher for, I think, like 30 years in the New York public school system. He won, oh, sorry. He won Teacher of the Year. He was like, you know, all that. And then he left, and he wrote this book on how damaging he believed the public school system is and he kind of lays it all out and as someone who went to public school you're like it's so true it is yeah. so true and i still feel the effects of these things and he just says and it's never going to change like he he's like it's difficult for it's that very to difficult change. for that change that to change it would be like an immense sea change you know um and so i think we started there and started to build with intention what we wanted um, gosh, this is so hard to communicate. What are you trying to say now? I'm just trying to give them a picture of what unschooling means for us. So I guess what, but in order for you to understand what unschooling means for us, and there is no like actual definition and it's a huge blanket for many different types of home education. Mm -hmm. Um, but essentially I think it means child led education. Uh, it does not, unschooling is it's like it creates this picture that like you are uneducating them or yeah, something like literally doing nothing well or time. like yeah that or you're actually trying to reverse education but it means yeah. more it's child led and so as it's, over it's trusting the child yeah and 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 trusting that they will they want to learn and they'll they'll kind of go down that path yeah and that's why we're willing to do it because we read books and we had thought about it and formulated some ideas about humans, mm -hmm. about children and adults and how people learn and what environments they flourish in. And also, also asking ourselves what we wanted our kids to become and what we wanted them to be able to do. And, mm -hmm. um, in the throes of it, before we actually went to unschooling, um, I was talking to another homeschooling mom who had kids like in college getting master's degrees and stuff So I'm like well, whatever she did worked and she was like, you know, it was always a mess It was always a mess. She's like, but I realized that I just only have a couple jobs It's like or she said I really only have one job and it's to teach them to be good people and That was really enlightening mm -hmm. and so that's really when we did start deciding like well, what is our job? What do we feel like we are supposed to teach our children and I think we kind of added a couple more to that. We said we want to teach them to work because mm -hmm. if you know how to work, you will always be able to make it. We want to teach them how to learn. Yeah, that's a big one right there. So that and that, um, or at least not get in the way of how, how they learn. So that even if they come to an obstacle where they're willing to work, if they know how to learn, they can find the information they need and then move and forward. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one was how to be a good person or how to be a nice person or how to be happy is probably the best way to say that. So once we kind of said those are the three things we want to teach them, how do we do that? How do we build a life and build an environment where they can learn those things? And so ultimately we did end up with unschooling or um, child led, right. which means after all of that, <laughs> which means that we let our kids choose what they want to learn and how they want to spend their time. For us, that doesn't mean complete freedom because, you know, but, which some people do yeah. who are in Maybe unschooling. Have like two kids, though. <laughs> like some unschoolers want their kids to experience even like choose their bedtime and choose when they eat and choose what they eat. Um, choose if they do chores or not. Or, yeah, you know, so that they can kind of learn. Open book. Yeah, we did not do that because. I think partially our family size. Yeah. And we did want our kids to understand that they're a part of a community and that 
people rely on them. Mm -hmm. And so they don't get to just sleep all day. Um, they do have, Mike does wake the kids up. And they, we do kind of have set, not set meal times, but times of day when, when you're in the kitchen. And they do not have access to anything on the computers that they want. Right. Um, so that means that they don't, in our family, it means that they can't play games. They can't do anything uneducational, which is pretty broad for edu what is educational. Right. But they can't do anything uneducational like Minecraft, even though they could argue that it is. But they can only do that on the weekends, and that's only for a certain amount of time. And at any time, if mom and dad say, no more screens, there's no more screens, they're out. So we do actually have that sort of structure because we feel like it helps create a better environment to make them actually seek and do and become. Right. But beyond that, there are no requirements. Um, the Which only requirement. Yeah. Well, the only requirement is that we see them learning. Learning or doing. Yeah. Uh, but you're usually learning while you're doing something. Yeah. So. Um, then I will say that isn't easy for every child or every personality type mm -hmm. um, because it is a skill. It is a skill to learn how to ask yourself what you're interested in doing um, and what you would like to learn. Now, I should say it's actually a natural skill. You're born with it. But if your kids have gone to public school, they've probably lost it. Most likely because the compulsory education kind of kills that. Yeah, because things. nobody at school says, hey, what are you interested in? What do you want to learn? And what do you think about that? And would you like to look into it further? Three-year-olds do that, right? Or a, an 18-month-old does that. They open up the cabinet and they dig through it and they make something with it or whatever. Um, but I have noticed that um, our kids, specifically our kids who were in China, were they did not ever get asked what they wanted Never or what they thought. Um, they were not empowered in any way. Um, it is harder for them to learn how to act with power and to move forward on with, with some confidence. Mm -hmm. and, and so that has been a process to teach them how to do that again. And so if your kids have been in public school, you will kind of have to help them learn how to do that. And that's through a lot of questions. So we have done things where we just sit down with a kid who's struggling. Like some of our kids, they got it. They are just like always, always doing new things, learning new things, and they don't really ever, you know, we let them kind of have time to process and things. They don't always have to be on, on top of it. But right. there's some of our kids where it's not hard, but we're the ones that where it has been harder. And that is not just life experience. That is also personality type. Mm -hmm. um, we'll sit down with them and say, well, what are you interested in? And they'll say, I don't know. <laughs> and we'll say, okay, well, when, you know, we kind of have to go through this process with them to help them find something they're interested in. It does not matter what it is. It, Just something. It does not matter because what you want them to understand is the process of learning something, the process of, you know, uh, acquiring a new skill or becoming entrenched in a topic. And so it could be horses. It could be robots. It could be um, anything. Yeah. So for some people, that's Minecraft. And I totally respect if that's what you want to go with. It's just not what we do. Um, but so we let them, and then we say, well, where do you think you could learn that? Or, or whatever, we might look on the computer. And I'm showing them essentially what the other kids are already kind of doing naturally. Like we're going to Google it and we're going to go to YouTube and we're going to see if there's a course on it. And then, you know, we're going to show them and they can start that course, those sorts of things. So that means some of our kids are using curriculums. Somebody was surprised the other day that Esther is using a curriculum for math. Esther wanted to use a curriculum for math, so we found one for her um, because she's interested in, in following a certain path and she wants to improve her math so that she can follow that path. Which um, like this, and then that's the core of, of how this works is that as a, as a child is interested in something, is it studying something, or they see like, okay, this is where I wanna be they recognize that these are maybe the subjects I, I should focus in because we get a lot of questions from people who wonder like, well, how are they going to, how are they going to learn math or how are they going to learn some of these basic skills that, or benchmarks that the school has just sort of determined are, are there for whatever reason. Um, but the reality is we want them to, I guess, have more, have an end goal in mind and then help then they figure out how they're going to get there. So if one of our kids wants to become an engineer, 
that means they will figure out which math, what math they need to learn to have the prerequisites to go to college or, or whatever is required. So it's more um, that they have an end goal in mind and then they, they learn the subjects that they need to learn to get there. Yeah, and some right. of you, I, I wish, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike, because some of you might freak out and say, but what about math? It's and, always the, math is always the question. It's well, and I think question. that's for two reasons. One, <laughs> because the way you were taught math, you hated it. Most likely, what, 90% of us hated you math. You didn't learn it voluntarily. You did not learn it voluntarily. <laughs> and so you think that every must, everybody must be forced to do math. That's not true. At one time or another, I've seen all of my children, I yeah, all of them doing math voluntarily. Like full sheets of math problems voluntarily. And so because it applies to something else or just to learn. because it's interesting math well, actually yeah, little, is interesting if little, you're not little kids like math like even jude loved doing the little math it's like a game things. yeah and so i think that's the first reason why you always ask about math because you think you must be forced to do math and then the second thing is <laughs> this is a, a whole philosophy we have nobody thinks that every adult should do ev should be able to do any job because we know that's stupid Everybody has aptitudes. Um, some people would be really happy doing one thing, but would be miserable doing another thing or be really skilled and talented in doing one thing and terrible at another thing. Um, we know that because people are different, but we don't treat people like that in education at all. We expect everybody to be exactly the same and learn the exact same thing. And so and I guess- better excel at all those things too. Yeah, or we're scared, right? And so if you had a child who was doing math and hated it and was terrible at it, Instead of saying, oh no, you might say, okay, guess you're probably not going to be an engineer, right? You're probably not going to grow up and be a mathematician. Because so let's not waste our time. Let's not waste our time. Like you don't love it, because, and it, but you're probably really good at something else. It's just a clue on who you are. Now, and you might say, but, 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 but it's like, but what? You know, for one thing, I have a calculator in my pocket at all times where I can do complex math. Um, I, I, for us, I think it's helpful to know your times tables. So I do encourage my kids, like it's helpful. You probably want to learn that. But they do. They learn it because yeah. of just everyday life. Everyday life does involve addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Yes. Did I ever say division? Yeah. <laughs> um, so those things, those things just happen because you're trying to figure out what half of a dollar is, you know? Yeah. So. And I think that's really what we do in part of our unschooling is when our kids want to buy something you know, we let them interact with the money and the cashier and all of those things. We let them, even though it's painful sometimes, look at the money they have, look at the total and like hands a bill over and the cashier will say, um, I need more. And they're like, Oh, you know, so they're learning Little math. Things. But I think I learned, you know, I remember being in school and how painful it was to learn multiplication of fractions and mm -hmm. division of fractions. And it didn't make any sense to me, but then you get in the kitchen and you've got nine kids and you've got to multiply a recipe times three. And I got fractions like that. <laughs> and so letting your kids cook is math. Right. There are math is everywhere. And in when you take all of the reality of math out and put it on into a curriculum, it does become painful. But when you bring math out back into the world, it's interesting again. It's fun again. And it sinks in. Yeah. And so I guess we feel like our job as parents, and this is not just for math, but every subject, is to give them opportunities to do things that will require growth. Right. And to put them in situations. And life does that a lot. And so, um, you know, we plan on next year when we are building our house, our kids will be very involved in that process um, because there's a lot of geometry in building a house. Right. I mean, you, I remember you got to figure out the area of a square. Well, that is really uninteresting until it, you're talking about a, a room yeah. or a garden or a garage, you know, those sorts of things. So I think we feel like we are confident that if you let children live and you let them follow their interests, they will learn what they need to learn. And if they hit something they don't know, they know how to learn. They know how to get on the internet. They know how to go to the library. They know how to t phone a friend. They know how to learn things. And really, whenever somebody challenges me about homeschooling, I often ask them, well, when you want to know something, what do you do? And so they say, oh, well, I'm like, no, well, there's something you want to know. What do you do? And they say, well, I'll Google it or I'll call someone I know who knows about it or, 
those sorts of things. I say, well, that's how we educate our kids because that's how humans learn things. Nobody ever says, well, I go to a school. I mean, you might when well, you sure, really, yeah. really. If you're like, okay, there's a course at the, at the yes. community college, I'll take like, sure. It serves a purpose to do, yes. to do that. But the other thing is when you're interested and you actually want to know something, you learn like a thousand times better. Oh, sure. You re I mean, there's all sorts of research into Intention. how you retain the information and how you understand the information. And that when you ask the question, you're ready for the answer. Right. Because sometimes that's just a developmental issue with their kids. They're, they haven't even asked that question yet. The question doesn't make sense for them. So the answer is never going to make sense for them. Mm -hmm. And that's different for every child because of their aptitudes, their, their strengths, and those sorts of things. And so we let our children lead with their strengths, lead with their interests, and we trust that it will all work out. Um, you know, Elijah is in this position right now where he's trying to decide if he's going to go to college. Um, that's a whole other topic of... Whether... Well, and, and we should answer it. Everybody yeah. asks us, what about college? To us, as you can see, college is something that you go to when it gives you what you want, when it answers a need. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you know, when we grew up, everybody went to college in our family. That's just what you did. And you went to college having no idea what you were going to do when you got <laughs> Whether there. Whether you knew it or not, you're going to college. I'm, you're, and you're just like, and everybody says, what's your major? I'm not sure yet. And in our minds, declared. that's crazy. You should not be going to college if you don't even know what you want to do because it might not it it's a waste of time i know that's and that i know that's a little controversial but um you go to college when college will give you what you want when it's a good investment for your goals and so elijah's trying to decide that right now and so he knows in order to go to college he's looked at the schools that he would go to according to his interests and his desires and he's looked at their requirements for admission and so he knows that if he wants to do that then there are certain things he's gonna have to do most colleges here in the United States um, are very supportive of homeschoolers mm -hmm. and some require um, some sort of de declaration of graduation from that could be from their parents. Some require that you have uh, ACT or SATs, but some very prestigious schools don't require either of those things. And just want to see life experiences, see that you've been entrepreneurial, see that you've been creative, and um, maybe they that you get some letters of recommendation a few more than their other applicants. The reason for that is that if you look at the data, homeschoolers do better in college. And if you look at homeschoolers and you break it down even more, unschoolers do better than most homeschoolers in college. Because um, they're self-led, because they, they know how to be I think a self-starter, mm -hmm. how to move forward on their own. And, and they're explore. confident. Yeah, they don't have to be told what to do. And they don't even, I don't, when Andrew went to school for a month, he his friends were always he telling him. He did that. He did the little like experiment here with mm -hmm. middle school. He tried it out for a month. And he said it was funny to him how often kids would be like, oh, you don't have to do that. And he'd be like, what I want to do that. Like, what do you no. mean you have to do what? Like an assignment. Oh, they were just And he was like, be system. reading something. They're like, oh, you don't have to do that. And he's like, I want to do that. They're like, no, but you don't have to. And he's like but I want to, you know? And so that the system almost, it's just human nature to, to do as little as possible. To game it. Yeah, to, to game it. That is, do, that's a good part work. of us. But in the school system, mm -hmm. it works against us. And so we actually lose our desire just to seek knowledge and to do, as, <laughs> do your best. We're trying to do as little as possible. Unless you are back. a certain personality type that really flourishes in that right, school which, system. Yeah, there are some people that are that way. Um, we could talk for a million hours about that that idea that there are certain learning styles and certain personality types that actually really love going to public school. Um, I still think that they might be better served in other areas, but um, that's just my opinion. But I know there are certain personality types and certain learning styles that do not flourish in the public school system. Um, so, you know, we do have some children who are inter in interested in college. We have some children who are not. Um, I, to me, they may go end up going to college at 30. You know, they might learn something about themselves and then say, you know what, I could really use this degree. Then they'll go and they'll get it done quickly and with intention and um, it'll make sense for them. Right. And they, but I think there are so many things you can do these days where um, it doesn't make sense to go get a degree. If some of us, some of our kids want to work in the trades, you know, where they go and get an apprenticeship or they go to a trade school, that's great. Mm -hmm. If they want to be an entrepreneur and maybe take a few courses, that makes sense too. Um, 
I think the main thing is but that if they want to be a doctor, then obviously they would need to go to school and do that. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. I think the main thing is that they go with intention and they go because it makes sense. Um, so let's start looking at questions because sometimes we don't even remember. Does the state not have actual academic requirements? Um, well, different states are different. And we can't speak to every state's requirements. So it's, you have to look into that for your state. But by and large, no state, I don't believe that any state has requirements like that you learn certain things or do certain things. They might have a certain amount of time you're supposed to spend and how you let them know. It might be very simple. The, some states do require state testing, but I don't think there's any states that, that there's any implications if your scores are well, what they want no. them to be. But like when we did K-12 in Utah, we because we're doing K-12, you're basically in the system. Mm -hmm. they, I did, I remember taking Elijah to do testing at a, a place. That, and we did have to check in with the so, teacher, yeah. yeah. Um, somebody said, how do you keep track of what everyone is doing and learning in different subjects for records? We don't keep records, so we don't keep track. We just make sure that they're getting better. Crazy, right? <laughs> um, do you use curriculum all? Yes. As we said, what was we, the question? You do were you, a bit. Sorry. Do you use curriculum at all? Yes. When a child requests, uh, there might be a language curriculum that somebody's using. There might be, like we said, Esther's doing a math curriculum right now. Um, it just depends. We seek them out, and often they're boring, so they quit. We've kind of learned which websites offer better things. I mean, I shouldn't say that because then everybody's going to be like, what websites? Yeah. It's different um, for everybody. But we do like Great Courses Plus has had some good things. Um, Teaching textbooks for math. Well, no, no, no. I don't no. mean that. Okay. I mean, um, what has Elijah done a few classes in? Master class? Master class? Yeah. Yeah. We've done some master class. There's so well, much we on just, YouTube and we podcasts. We just got a um, photography. Well, also, there's just there's people who, there are, there are places you can find classes. Like, Elijah just got a photography class today that he bought online from a person who who does that and we pay for those and yeah we, we 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 put the bill for all this stuff but um anyway so there's lots of different options if, especially in a very specific topic Hang um, on, I work. Ah. okay i would love to know how an unschooler plans their day i would too <laughs> no um we we and our family kind of have a structure a slight structure just because you know of what other things we have going on but um, if you are a scheduler and you like having a schedule, then that will probably come naturally to you. Mm -hmm. If you're not, then you don't need to do it. But the whole point of unschooling is kind of the idea that there isn't necessarily a schedule. So we keep it pretty open. Absolutely. Right? The only thing to schedule is like lunch. <laughs> <laughs> do they have to take the ACT or SAT? It depends on the school. Um, at what age did you see your kids really start to pursue their own interests? Um, that's a great question, and I do think that it looks different at every age. Um, and for every kid, though. Yeah. But um, I think that it's, and when kids are younger and they're unschooled, it just looks like they're playing all day because. They and you kind need of are. to learn to value play. And that's okay. Um, one of the things that in our in our research, one of the things that we listened to was a professor talking about he was interested in unschooling. And he did not think that the data would support it. And uh, he's like, I'm a scientist. I, I'm n I did not have a, I just wondered. And he said, but it turned out the data did support it. And he talked about indigenous cultures that have no schooling system. And he said, but yet every child, by the time they're an adult, knows the skills they need to survive in that culture and to the, the skills that the adults in that culture know. And he said, and they almost always, or not almost, he said, they always learned it through play. He said, so if you go into, you know, uh, an indigenous tribe in Brazil, the adults are hunting and making homes and fishing and, um, you know, creating things, baskets and ropes. And he said, and if you go and watch the kids who are completely unsupervised, he said, they are roaming around playing at the skills that the adults are doing and right. learning them along the way. Really fascinating. Um, are you guys completely unschooling? I, I think there's no firm definition. I know some people are going to have even more freedom than we do. Right. Cause, but Because we do require like chores, like we said, and we do have rules about screen time. So we're probably not completely yeah. unschoolers. How do your children pick what to learn? 
are you involved or are they on your own? Uh, we usually, Depends. once they get a hang of it, they pick on their own. I might have to, or might might have to encourage them to do something. Um, but one of the things we read in, in uh, I'll put a few books down here, but the first unschooling book I read was called Free to Learn. There's a couple of different ones, so follow the link to that instead of just looking it up. But um, she said what she learned through unschooling her kids was that they have intense learning times and then they have processing times. And she's like, at first she thought they were doing nothing in processing times. And then she realized they needed time to assimilate everything they had just learned. So she's like, processing time might look like them riding their bike in a circle for two weeks. <laughs> she's like, they're just thinking and they need it. It's, you know, it's gotta catch up. But people do ask us all the time. They're like, oh, so when you go to that museum, do you have them write a journal entry? No, no, well, no, we don't. We just go to the museum and we don't force them to learn anything when we're there because we trust that if there's something fascinating to them there, we might help them, you know, like get the resources they need or we'll notice and be like, oh, look, because it's fun. That's what you do for friends and family anyways. I know Pearl loves this certain thing. So we'll be like, Pearl, look at this book and like, look at this cool thing. Um, but no, it because kids are smart and as soon as they see you taking the driver's seat of their yeah. education, they're out. They don't, they don't, they can't get in that seat at the same time as you. So you, it's really important that you empower them by completely letting them lead. Um, but, but we will say, but I need you to do something. I need to see you in that driver's seat. I'm not going to get in it, but I need to see you in it. Um, is there anything from public school that you like or try to incorporate in your unschooling? No, mm, there's nothing. Yeah. Mm -mm. Sorry. In the beginning, we made a big chalkboard and we put up all the like posters. And <laughs> I know, stuff. I remember trying to set up like a school room. Yeah. And that didn't really work. So this question is, how long does it take them to do homeschool? Uh, they never stop. Well, the, okay, here's the point. And this is the point of unschooling is that learning is a lifelong pursuit. And so we don't have a school year. Mm -mm. We don't, there's no schedule. So learning won't stop so it just it just continues it's right all the time i mean we have bedtime and bedtime's <laughs> so later on friday you want to talk about just like i guess daily start and stop but no we don't and so people say do you take off for the summer it's like no because it doesn't look any different we do let them we probably are a little bit more relaxed with uneducational screen time in the summer but not well, much and they're naturally they're playing with friends more in the summertime because the more kids are around but otherwise it doesn't really change yeah, and I think that answers a question um, that a lot of moms have is like, I think my kids would drive me crazy. I can't do it. I'm not a good enough mom. Everybody's kids drive them crazy in the summer <laughs> and on, you know, those sorts of days because there is no structure at all. And their uh, entitlement the, is the super high. The expectation for entertainment goes up in the summertime because kids are out and doing stuff. Yeah, and so if my kids are driving me crazy, it's either because I haven't communicated effectively on their, what we're going to be doing Meaning we're not doing anything. You better go find something to do. Or um, there isn't enough structure in our day, right? Where anything is possible at any time where mm -hmm. I haven't communicated. Like, so at those times when it's just gotten a little bit out of control, we actually do kind of start to get more structure mm -hmm. naturally. And we'll say, hey, just so you know, before noon, you should be doing this. I'm going to be doing this. I'm not going to be able to help you with that. Right. Um, and they'll learn and they'll kind of settle in. But my kids drive me crazy just as much as public school moms kids drive me crazy in summer. I really think so. And once school starts and we all just kind of settle back in. So I guess get there is a, a little routine. I guess there is a little bit of a difference there is. then. It's just that summer, man. By the end I am like, whew. <laughs> um what values do you reckon are taught through unschooling that may not be in public school? That's a great question. Um, man, we're gonna have to cut down a lot of this I know, video. We've got a lot of Maybe we'll have to do a part here. one and two, but um, I think that a, a lot of creativity and um, what's the word I always use? Innovation. Um, I and this is something that supports us, but like a lot of big CEOs say that they the kids that come to them that have like been straight A students through the public school system and through college and things come to them with not that they, and they don't have the skills they're looking for. Those kids don't know how to think outside the box. They mm -hmm. don't know how to innovate and that's, they don't know how problem solving skills. 
And that's what we think we teach our kids more than anything. And what's great about that, we have all information at our fingertips. We don't need to memorize dates and figures anymore. We don't need, we can look up a recipe at any time. We can look up an equation at any time, but can you think outside the box? Can you innovate? Can you be creative? That's really what is going to help you um, be successful in the future. Well, and, and most, and I think, I don't want to say all people, but I think most people that comes naturally to the thinking outside the box or being creative. You mean um, if they're left? If they're left, if, if we don't get in the way which unfortunately public school does get in the way and it, and it kind of kills that. Because it says, so, don't think differently, do exactly what I tell you. I don't yeah. want you to write your name on a different part of the paper. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to color here. I want you to do exactly what I tell you. And when you do, I'll praise you. And when you don't, you fail. Right. And when we're done on this topic, we're done on this topic and we move on and we can't yeah. spend any more time on that. Don't look over here. Don't look over there. Stay focused here. Um, and so all those things, uh, I think, inhibit that creativity that is naturally there. Can unschooling go against your religious beliefs? If so, how and how do you handle it? Not for us. What does that mean? I guess they're saying, are you worried that your kids will get into areas that teach them something you don't believe in? Um, no, we're not oh. worried about that. Well, because we're, we are very open to discussing different ideas. and I don't think you prepare your children very well for life. If, if you try to like keep them... We, I mean, you obviously want to keep your kids away from like hot pans and, you know, drugs, right? But I right, think safety wise safety, but I think you have to also let them as they grow older, um, try some ideas out, just like trying some situations out that might be a little bit more dangerous, I guess you could say, but like there's more risk involved so that they can learn how to stand on their own two feet and to navigate the sort of complexity. Yeah, I think what, if anything, we're we're trying to with home homeschooling, unschooling because the kids are here and we're, we do have sort of we do have a sway uh, because they come to you, especially you, like and then discuss things that you are. We're trying to teach them to take a measured approach to any information that they're taking in. That's and to, so important. And to recognize that 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 information is coming from a source, whether it's a person or an organization that can't help but have some. Um, bias. bias in that information and so we're not too worried about them being led astray as it were because if I think our children are much more prepared <laughs> to recognize that all information comes from a source that you you probably shouldn't place implicit trust in we always right? say like yes what are the sources on that and who what is their intention what do they get out of saying that and i think that's one of the most important things you can teach humans these days is to be reasonable in the face of of in challenging information right um we all know i don't know if you know if you see this deep fake technology where you can make anybody look like they were doing or saying anything right in the video or yes video. so that should tell you that you can't trust anything Completely. Completely. And uh, that you have to be reasonable at all times and say, does that make sense? Does that line up with other things that I've seen? Are there more than one source saying that? Is it, have we had time to really think and investigate that? And are definitely we're giving our kids the, the ability to do that. And I can't think of many things that are more important than the ability to do that. Yeah, because we live in. again, a public school, if it's in the textbook, it's truth. Which is, um, we all know it's not true. Which is, so, but they don't, they don't talk about that. They're not going to say like, now let's take this with a grain of salt because we know that the author of this textbook also wrote this or thinks that. Yeah. Um, so I think what we're not worried about our kids going outside of our, our faith because, um, they know how to think. I don't know. I'm not sure how to say it, but yeah. Um, yeah. um okay. The next question. Uh, da, 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 da. If your kids wanted a more traditional curriculum, would you support that? There have been times where our kids were tired of the responsibility of what they needed to learn. And so they said they wanted more traditional curriculums. I'm thinking of a couple in particular, and they went to that and lasted like six weeks. Yeah, so like, yes. But it actually was kind of good for them because then they realized, well, that's actually not what I want. But it gave them, they were like, okay, what do I want? Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a, a sometimes track for that. it helps to see like to go down a road that's kind of a dead end in order to recognize like okay this actually doesn't work for me 
Yeah. <clears throat> um, and also that I, I think that's another point is we allow our kids to shift gears and to change what the thing is that they're interested in. So sometimes they will dive deep into a certain topic or subject and get really interested in that. And then they, they kind of move on to something else and we don't we don't force them to stay and interested in something. I thought you said you wanted to be good at this instrument or something. We don't right. Do we don't we, we don't force them because at the, once you start forcing they they stop learning. They yeah. just they're doing it for for you. This is a really good question and one we have thought about. Um, it says how will they uh, they adjust to a work environment where they must do things they don't want to do? Well, even though we let their education be child-led, our kids get all sorts of opportunities to do things they don't want to do in our home. And that's yeah. part of teaching them how to work. Yeah. They do dishes. They do chores. They help out, you know, as a member of We're our family. We're constantly... So, I, I, yes, the kids have to do things they don't want to do on a daily basis because who wants to do the dishes? But, um, and as they get older, like Andrew, who's writing now, he knows there's some parts of writing he doesn't like and he's willing to do them. But let me tell you something. I don't believe that you should spend your life doing a lot of things you don't want to do. <laughs> but you, if you go to public school, you just kind of think that's life. Everybody has to do the things they don't want to do. That's true to a certain degree, but you choose to do them because you see that they help you reach your goals. Mm -hmm. So it's not so bad. Um, I don't believe that we all should just be, you know, swallowing like life because that's what we have to do. I think you should be seeking out a life that brings you joy and that excites you. Good point. I guess the last, nobody really asked this. It's mostly about curriculums and courses and college and ACTs exams um I think you know that's part of why Esther's doing this math curriculum right now because she does want to go to college and she knows that the college she wants to go to or the few she's looking at require an ACT mm -hmm. and she knows that for the ACT her weakest spot is math and so she is working hard to learn the things she needs to learn to get the score she wants to get so she can go to college but there I think go. One of the things I think is so important if you are going to pursue unschooling is to create an environment and to model it. Okay, somehow you guys can see this is not the same day because <laughs> when we were editing the video, we realized that it hadn't it stopped recording the it last stop minutes. recording. It was like this video is too long. We had this amazing <laughs> like kind of finale. summing up and yeah. finale. It was like so it was beautiful. So epic. It was emotional. But it, we missed it. So and we're just not going to be able to do that I doubt again. we was, can recreate that. Sorry. It was a one-time thing for sure. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to say that probably the most important thing you can do for your kids, whether you are have them in public school, you're homeschooling them, or you are unschooling them, is modeling the learning process and, that, and showing them that learning is a joy. And so that means having them come in, find you reading a book, or see you trying your hand at a new skill or researching mm -hmm. a topic or or starting a new project all of those things they're learning from like those kids in the jungles of the amazon they will model what they see their parents doing so i think that's the main thing and i think showing them that you feel so much joy in learning things and you know modeling for them that for them it'll create a culture in your home of continual growth and learning and education right so, so is there anything else to... i think that's it um is that it? so that's the end and um we you know that's how we do it and we didn't share this because we didn't really we knew that like everybody would have a lot of strong feelings and opinions on it you mean we didn't share it before yeah and we didn't necessarily okay. want to hear it you know about how you don't agree with us but i think more than that we realized that there are a lot of people who would like to hear because Maybe they're interested in it or it, it might lead them to find what they want to do with their kids and we just can't worry about it for all the people who want to talk about how they don't agree. Right. All the haters, I guess. Well, and I think at the very least, what we hope that you'll do is, like we said at the very beginning of the video, be intentional about your, your kid's education and not just do whatever, just don't, don't just put them on a conveyor belt, <clears throat> but be conscious of how they're being educated and think about it and make sure you agree with how that's happening and that it's the best thing for them. Because like we said before, we every family is different, every situation is different, um, but the hope is that at the very least, we're all sort of thinking about it and we're willing to make changes where we see the changes need to be made. And then yeah. we're not just feeling uh, disempowered and stuck and unable to 
affect that situation because yeah. you can. Or scared that it's that you could never take the education into your own hands. I think that's mostly what we hear is that it's just, I don't think I can do it. And absolutely you can because learning is natural. Information is exciting to learn. And um, as long as you take them on that journey, you're going to be just fine. All right. Sorry, there's lots of children. We have a lot of kids. <laughs> turns out so yeah, friends over yeah that's it for today um that's what we do for homeschooling uh we love it i don't i think we're really really confident in that uh it took us a long time to find our place and our groove but i think we've we found our groove feels that way yeah so if you have any other questions you can leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them and yeah I will also try, I, it is going to be hard because there's a million of them, but I will put some of the books that I would start with mm. in the description or I'll put a link and have them on the website so that they're there forever and you can find them. Sounds All right. Good. Talk to you later, guys. See ya. Bye.